Welcome to the first live of Round Talks at Feeword Business and now at, uh, right at the start at the top level. Where do, do we go from here is the topic of the following CEO talk. This is all about opportunities arising from the crisis. And I would like to welcome the moderator of the discussion, Hermann Rutgers. Good morning. Hermann has a great experience in the fitness industry as a supplier, operator and association level. He's a co-founder and ambassador of Europe Active in Brussels and international ambassador for FIBO. Hermann, I'm glad you're here. What's about to happen? We're going to have an exciting discussion with three experts in our industry, each from a different part of the ecosystem of our sector. So it's going to be exciting. Watch this space. We're excited. Let's go. Thank you. Good morning. So let me introduce you to the panel we have here today. On my right hand side is well, Andreas Meyer. Well, He's the general manager for Germany for Technogym. We have next uh, on my right hand side Martin Seibold. Mm -hmm. He's the CEO for LifeFit Group here in Germany, an operator with multiple brands and multiple positions. We'll come back to that later. And on my left hand side, Carsten Hollasch, partner in Deloitte, Germany and an expert in the industry uh, with whom I've done a lot of market research and the latest one came out, you have been introduced yesterday, which is a study on the impact of the corona crisis on our industry, which we'll talk a little bit about in a minute as well. So, of course, we have all been bombarded with bad news in the last couple of months. You know, We've seen the corona crisis, we have a million people died because of it, we have seen an enormous impact in the economy. The European economy is uh, pr predicted to drop this year GDP by 8.7% and counting. And next year, it's not going to be easy as well. However, every cloud has a silver lining. One of the good things of the uh, crisis for our sector has been that being active, being healthy, being physically fit helps your immune system. And that is something where our industry really can capitalize on. And, and the industry needs to do a better job at promoting that element of our sector. We are a force for good and not part of the problem. So on that note, let me ask Martin on my right hand side. Martin, what has been for you the most eye-opening thing during this crisis from your, your own company's point of view? What has surprised you in a positive sense and what has surprised you maybe in a not so positive sense? Could you? Elaborate a little bit on that. Start with the <laughs> big question first. The big question, of Amazing. course. Amazing, very good. Look, um, when in March in Germany all health clubs had to close, I think it was a um, big new thing for everyone. And all companies went into crisis mode. Yeah. The energy mm -hmm. went up. Um, but I think what was the really true outcome three months, four months afterwards is that our members, they're very loyal. And I think I speak for the industry, but certainly in our numbers, in the LifeFit Group uh, brands, um, we have seen an incredible loyalty from our members. And we should not forget that Germany is one of the few countries in the world who actually was able to continue to bill the members. Yeah. So we were still taking the direct debit and we have not seen huge increases in rejects. Yeah. We have not seen huge increases in retention, uh, in, re uh, in um, attrition, yeah. only 4% uh, percentage points. So that really shows how loyal members mm -hmm. to this kind of sport activity and to the, uh, to the industry itself. Are. And I think that's incredible. Yeah, it is. Uh, actually, the report that uh, Carsten maybe can talk about in a minute shows a big difference in the impact, the negative impact in the first half year of this year on the industry's uh, revenues that Germany is actually the least impacted. And, and the most impacted is Spain and the UK mm. where also the closings were much lower <coughs> and the prevalence of, of Corona was much higher than it was in Germany. So I think that's a very interesting, interesting point. Um, Andreas, from, from your perspective, uh, as a key supplier to this industry, what was for you the biggest surprise or the biggest takeaway in this past crisis? Say the biggest surprise was the speed how Corona was developing. Because I remember with Martin sitting together somewhere and uh, having a chat in the beginning of March, and nobody ever could have imagined what came only two weeks later. Yeah. So this was really the speed how Corona was developing yeah. was really uh, very surprising to me. 
Now, during the crisis, I think the digitalization become even more important. And as Czech Gym, we're always a leader in this sector. So it gives us also a very good opportunity to now to, f to lead this change, which members, which also club members will do. So I'm very <coughs> positive about the future because I think Corona sooner or later will go over and for sure clubs will always be a physical meeting point for everybody. But digitalization, connectivity will become even more key. I guess in these last two months, we did a change, not only in the fitness industry, but overall, which have, would have taken 10 years normally, or five years. So yeah. it's, I guess it's really a catalysator, which made things very fast. Yeah. Hmm? No, I, 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 I'm with you. I'm, I'm, mm. I hear that. Karsten, from, from you're an expert, but really f as an outsider looking in, you're not an operator, you're not a supplier. What was your big surprise or takeaway during the crisis? What has struck you? Yeah, well, I think the, the positive news were um, that uh, the operators, um, especially when I look to Germany, got together very quickly, formed a group, and uh, together with the association uh, were, let's say, lobbying or building more transparency towards politicians, uh, the stakeholders outside, because what we have uh, not done, let's say, perfectly, and I'm saying we because I found myself belonging to the sector for so many years, is um, we have not given so much transparency and, and what's really the, the purpose of fitness and health is uh, for, the, for the people and that that has been progressed very much. And we have seen a lot of initiatives, so um, I, I spent a few words on that yesterday, on, on marketing, on promoting how important that is in engaging with universities, in giving, let's say, some guidance that you can still train out in a club after the shutdown was, uh, was eased and uh, obviously uh, following hygiene concepts, etc. But that physically mm. it's good and also mentally for the people not to stay at home all the time but spend uh, time with their let's say peers and 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 work out under hygiene concepts and uh, taking into consideration the distance etc yeah, yeah. No, i think uh, th that we have seen my, my big question is this whole of course the people couldn't go to the clubs because the clubs were closed uh, they trained at home I think the home equipment, like Technogym, you must have sold a lot of home equipment to, to consumers. But the question is, will that impact the future of the club? So maybe a question to Martin as a key operator here in Germany at different uh, brands mm -hmm. and different types of operators. Do you think the home fitness trend will impact the club future? Well, I would hope so. I think what in a positive sense I exactly mean. Uh, what, I, what people underestimate is that in uh, in Europe we have <coughs> very low penetration level and I'm sure Carsten you can talk a lot about those you know we are around 15 percent and, uh, and and some countries are in the Scandinavian at over 20 percent so we call it internally the red ocean that's where everybody is but the blue ocean the 85 percent this is the one which the digital and all the focus on uh, selling bikes and running and doing all these kind of activities starting. So I'm in this industry for 20 years and um, I hope that I will see the day, you know, when we have penetration levels north of 20 percent, like California has them in some Scandinavian countries. So, so my big belief is this has been a huge game changer. And yes, it will be painful for two or three years, no doubt about that. Um, uh, and we need as an industry to work together and um, but but overall we're going to break the mold and and get people into this whole kind of fitness apple that they announced to go into this market is sensational for all of us i was going to come back to that it later. really yeah. is so yeah. um but <laughs> i wanted to also add you know um carsten you mentioned the work in germany but i've been on so many international conference calls and uh, bilateral communication with a lot of CEOs around the world and America and Europe, England, UK, um, Euro Europe. The collaboration together is amazing. And, and we, when some people face to not be able to, um, um, you know, purchase masks, and we already had a big order, and, and of course with Life It Group, you know, uh, the, the size gives you some priority, we were able to order for competitors. You know, when others have good other solutions, we were able to jump on this. And I think the co-working, suddenly the whole competition went a little bit out of the window and let's say, let's move the sector forward. And I think this will really change how the industry 
will behave in the next five years and for the years to come. And I think that's, that's fantastic. May, may I, further on that cooperation and working together, suppliers with operators, mm -hmm. operators who are norm normally competing with each other, working together in fighting this crisis, coming up with good protocols. If I'm devil's advocate, when the crisis is over, do we go back to our old ways and not talk to our competitors anymore and not talk to our colleagues anymore and go back into our own little world? Or do you think this will stay, this cooperation? Because I think because of DSSV in Germany, the Federation and DFG, they really, you know, together put the protocols together, uh, brought people together, organized an advertising mm -hmm. campaign. Yeah? Gesundheit, fitness braucht Gesundheit, fitness <coughs> needs, health needs fitness. That was fantastic, and other countries copied that. My question to you would be, do you think that will stay, this camaraderie, this, this working? Do you think it will stay? I think absolutely, because when you share a good moment and you celebrate, maybe do a bit of drinking and all these kind of things, you tend to forget those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or you want to forget them. Yeah. But when you go through a crisis, yeah. like in your personal yeah. life, you really bond with people yeah. and you really know whom you can talk to. They yeah. pick up the phone and I think you create a different relationship. Yeah. I can certainly say, you know, when I get a phone call from one of my CEO colleagues in Europe, I'll pick up the phone. Yeah. And, uh, and I think that will, that, will be, that will continue to be there. How do you see that, Andreas? Well, I hope at least that collaboration stays at this level because we as a fitness industry, we need a bigger voice especially here in Germany, we have to influence more politics. And that only we can get it together. When everybody is fighting on its own, our forces are spread overall. So I, I hope really that this community, this, uh, this gathering of, our, of both forces will continue in the future to give the fitness industry a brighter future. Regarding what you said before, home equipment uh, is influencing clubs. I think it's pretty much the two sides of the same coin. I mean, when you buy a big kitchen, you do not stop going to your favorite Italian restaurant. So it's pretty much the same. Yeah. I guess it will become part. More people will train at home due to the change in society, more home working. You do not go often to your work. So probably before you went, before work, just to the club around your work. You do not do it anymore. You work at, at home. So I think for the clubs, it will be vital not become, to become only the place of choice, but the brand of choice. So I think this is really the direction it's going. Uh. Yeah, I, I, I totally yeah. agree with you. I think there's very solid research showing that people who do have a piece of home equipment or do exercise at home also are more loyal club the members. Club. So the old thinking of uh, mm. home fitness is a competition for the clubs. Mm. I don't believe in that anymore. Oh. It's really the whole hybrid. We talk about the hybrid mm. system is, is going to stay it's here. It's about then for the club how to how is it able to connect this training at home to the club? Yeah. There must be a clear link. Yeah. You know, and also, they must create a business model out of that. Yeah. To Carsten, on, on, uh, Martin mentioned mm. the arrival of Apple Fitness Plus, yeah, th which is being launched as we speak. Amazon is coming to mm. our ecosystem with a tracker and <coughs> with a mobile phone, training advice. A lot is happening, you know, Peloton, of course, everybody talks about Peloton, $28 billion last night when I looked at my phone. I can't look now because my phone is out there, but it's $28 bil billion. They never made $1 mm. profit, and all, all mm. they sell is a membership on an online streaming and a bike or a treadmill at your home. How do you see, see this mm. outsiders coming into our ecosystem? How do you see this, this uh, impacting the, the traditional brick and mortar clubs. Yeah, I, I just remembered when we first time presented this so-called ecosystem at um, the Europe Active uh, uh, at the FIBO, I think uh, some years ago, yeah. and everybody was looking at it. And yeah, it, it, it was clear <coughs> to everybody in looking at it, but to see the development over the last, let's say, decade or even 15 years, who, uh, what, what has happened to the, to the industry and, and which operators have entered, and I mean, with the Apples, with the Amazon, these are so uh, global and so big companies. And we, we, we have discussed that um, the industry, um, as Marco said, has not seen that much, let's say, ex well, I wouldn't say acceptance, but uh, transparency, etc. cetera. And, and those players would bring uh, a lot of uh, into that um, 
when they join the industry now and, 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 and force also the existing players to rethink about their business models because it's all about rethinking business models and adapting to it. And I, I, I don't think that we should compete with them or the industry should compete with them, but they should include them in their thinking and into their business model. Yeah. It's all about cooperation, absolutely, yeah. here. Yeah. So I, I think that it's very positive for the sector that those uh, players join and also um, lead to new ideas in the industry. Martin, you, you have a view on that, I'm sure. Yeah, look, I mean, if anything, the crisis also showed where the industry doesn't get it right. And certainly we at LifeFit Group, you know, we have so many different brands, but we also have so many different management teams. So in a way, it, it has shown which management team is working in which area very well. And so we use this whole um, area, a time, to really look at our processes, look at where do we get it with the customer wrong, and frictionless, you know, I think when I, I looked at a lot of competition, a lot of you guys on the, uh, who, are, who are listening here and watching, you know, that there is a lot we have to do to get better. And I think this arrival of those big giants um, really um, support this, that we have to get better yeah. at when we are not inside the gym. And, uh, and, and, and we need to create this kind of holistic approach that we have to be for the, for the member where the member is. So one of our main missions is, you know, interact with members to make them more active, which is yeah. very similar to UK Active. And, and I think we need to expand where we're yeah. doing this. You know, in Clubland, I think we're fantastic. The teams are solid, you know, welcome, hello, why are you here? You know, they, are, they know the members. We get that really right a lot of times. Yeah. But all the other touch points, you know, and then the growth. I mean, our YouTube channel grew by 750% yeah. within a six week window. So, you know, you suddenly you're way more exposed. Our very first um, group exercise class on the Monday after we closed on Friday, we have around four and a half thousand capacity in our physical gyms for a Monday evening class. We had 3,750 people watching the very first live class, yeah. <laughs> you know, and but meanwhile, 25,000. So suddenly, it, this is a whole different ball game. Yeah. So, so, and we need to learn that. No, I think that's a very good point. I think the whole ha having to close the clubs and finding new ways to communicate with your members has accelerated the innovation and accelerated people to find a solution <coughs> to reach their members while they were closed. Uh, Andreas, from I know Techno Gym has always been a big, uh, the cloud, yeah? you, you, you invented yeah. almost the fitness cloud uh, with Nerio's vision. I don't know, sure. you probably saw yesterday your, your yeah. big, your big oh, of course visionary of course uh, on, on, our, mm. on our European mm. Health and Fitness yeah. Forum. And he was in good form in yeah. explaining you know, his passion for the, for the industry. And it's great to have mm. somebody uh, at, a, at a supplier level who is so passionate you know, about this industry uh, with his heart mm. and with his, all his energy. But it, 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 on, on what Martin mm. said, elaborating a little mm. bit on, on from your point of view, uh, how, how do you see this, this whole hybrid model, this whole uh, digitalization of the industry? It's key. Basically, we will never turn back. Digitalization will become the new normal, as we said. And it really, the corona was a catalysator for, that, for this. It changed the world uh, rapidly. Now we, the industry, have to adapt to this. We have to give the customer the possibility to train at home, the seamless experience. This is really key for the future. Yeah. The entry of, uh, of Apple, of Amazon, is amazing for all of us. I mean, this is so big, huge companies. They will take this industry to another level. And the, the blue ocean, these 85% who do not train actually, with the help of them, the collaboration with them, we should close or we should reduce this dramatically. Yeah. Because when they, are, when they really, with our help for sure, because it will be a collaboration with them, I'm convinced about this, there will be much more awareness. Much more awareness. Bigger business. So everybody of us will be happier. Yeah. This, so. It's uh, absolutely. And, and those mm. uh, companies that you know, mentioned uh, have huge budgets. You know, they have bigger budgets to develop uh, new technology mm. than mm. the whole fitness mm. industry together. Yeah. So I, I, and it's a compliment to our sector, basically, that yeah. they're entering this sphere. And, and Apple, Tim yeah. Cook, the, the current CEO of Apple said, my legacy for Apple will be that we enter the healthcare sector. It's, it's really, that is his vision. And the Apple Watch, of course, was their first entry 
uh, into tracking of activity and more than that in the latest version of course you can do more than that but in terms of, of those people but at the same time it's raising the bar for all of us it's raising the bar for you for you uh, and for everybody uh, in our sector mm -hmm. which is good you know Definitely. if Nokia would still be having 80% of the mobile phone market if this little company from California would not have entered as who was it, mm -hmm. making computers only entering the, uh, the the mobile phone market and taking it to a totally different level Carsten you back to the ecosystem if, if you fast forward 10 years you know we have this mantra 100 million members in Europe by 2030 yeah, in the next 10 years do you think the current <coughs> crisis has <coughs> impacted or, or has hindered to be able to achieve that goal because 2020 will not be a good year for anybody we, we may even have fewer members at the end of this year in our sector than we had at the end of 2019 uh, can, can you elaborate a little bit on that because you talked about it a little bit yesterday sure but not everybody has probably seen your presentation yesterday. sure i mean uh, what we have done um obviously um with your corporation and, and fibo um, is that we conducted a study on uh, assessing the impact on, on the pandemic crisis on the operators and how the operators uh, do see the foreseeable future uh, over the next months. And um, you're rightly saying 2020 will be not a good year for, for the sector. Um, by the way, it will not be a good year for all of us in the economy. Uh, but I, I still see some effects in 2021. And obviously, everything will also be dependent a bit if we do have a second crisis or not. Yeah, if we don't have a second crisis, and um, as 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 all of us think, I I I, I strongly believe that the digitalization um, being forced <coughs> for the operators, but also for the others, will have a kind of catch-up effect uh, in the years after 2021. Uh, uh, for the next years to come and that more people will train out. So there will be a kind of acceleration uh, because of that. And I don't see uh, digitalization or I don't see home fitness as a substitute for, for the club business. I still see the club business as very important yeah. because we are all social. We want to train out. We want to meet with people. We want to get advice. Yeah? And therefore, I think it's very complementary. And that will also raise the bar again and will accelerate if the operators do it right and if we will see other, let's say, coming to that, to that space. So in 10 years, I would see still a good uh, in-shape club business, but I would see much more digital offers. I would see much more collaboration with the Apple, the Amazons and the like. And I would see much more interaction with the members via digital channels in addition to their physical activities and training out at the club. Yeah. Very good. Maybe to Martin, because you you operate in the classical way, the low cost, the mid market and the premium. You're in all three of those in Germany, right? How do you see these segments evolving over, let's say, the next 10 years? Since we're talking about where do we go from here is the theme of today's talk. Mm -hmm. 10 years mm -hmm. is a nice horizon to talk about where do we go. How do you see the segments developing in, in, in the markets? Well, if I would know that and have that class ball, you, you know, know it. You know it because you're investing in all three, yeah. so you must be betting so, uh, on multiple ultimately, horses. Ultimately, we know from other industries that the mid-market, um, if they are not differentiating themselves and become either premium or become um, value for money, that you are stuck in it and then you have troubles. Every industry tells you this. And uh, there are numerous examples out there. Airlines, cars, hotels, restaurants, everyone closing. So, so we at Life Crew, we decided that Fitness First, who used to be the affordable fitness brand, moved into the mid-market over the years because cheaper operators with less service came on board and was stuck there. So three years ago, mm. we looked at this business in Germany and said, we need to move it up market. We need yeah. to premiumize it. On, this, on, this, on the same look, and when we watched that, we realized not all locations can be premiumized because of purchasing power, location, and competition. So we decided, what are we going to do with those? So, so we said, look, um, there's been numerous examples where operators try to invent their own differentiated um, um, operating models. And I think a lot of industries have shown they fail. So we said, let's not try to build our own um, um, uh, value for market, um, low cost model. Let's look for what is in the market. We found the best with Smilex. 
You know, we've, it's an incredible company, fast growing. We bought it with uh, 15 sites. We've meanwhile opened three more uh, since last year. And we have converted seven fitness first from that mid-market, which you could premium us into that. And they were mm. skyrocketing before, uh, before, uh, before Corona. You know, by mid-March, we were, the numbers were fantastic. So it, it, there is a place. Fitness first, on the other hand, the other 50, 60 clubs which we moved up market, they were performing like never before. Yeah. So, so in, a real, in a real turn, you know, you could see when, when, when you define your position and you define your values, how, how, how your staff should work, what kind of staff you have, what do you want to offer the members, your product, when you are clear with that. Yeah. But you cannot stuck in the mid-market. You have to be somewhere on the edge of it. Yeah. So we are now on the lower end of the mid-market with the value proposition, Smilex. We are on the higher mm -hmm. end, up into the upper end, premium market yeah. with Fitness First. We also bought a brand called Elpgym, which sits in the upper mid-market, boutique, yeah. great, um, full-intensity workout. And it has been incredible to so see their numbers, how they are going through Corona. They have basically no additional cancellations yeah. because these people want to train. And when they stop training, you see it. Yeah. And there is no workout at home, you know, who can support this. It's, it's nutrition, as we know, but it's also at the end of the day, you know, really putting the effort in, in the gym. So I think this whole specialization, the boutique market has been the market which has been growing, outgoing anything in the last um, three or four years, you know, even overtaking some of the value proposition growth. Yeah. And that's why we invested with Exponential, great partner from the US, biggest franchise for fitness, boutique fitness in the world. So we were just about to sign leases for Club Pilates and, and, and uh, Pure Bar. But of course, you know, we've now waited and now we have some fantastic contracts. Landlords are scrambling a little bit. Yeah. So we think that we're going to have much better economics on those going forward, much better locations. And there is no doubt that the home fitness with all the great YouTube channels and, and yogas and all this will drive people, what you said, Carsten, into the actual gym to actually experience some little bit of social uh, networking and all these kind of things. So, so, so we're very positive. But you got to define who you are and you have to have a clear vision and you have to differentiate yourself from your competition in order to yeah. be successful. No, I think it's, it makes all sense in the world. And of course, in fitness, all business is local. I mean, yeah. uh, I'm a member of a gym in a, a certain part of Dusseldorf, uh, and I don't care what's happening in Hamburg or in Cologne. Uh, it's, I, I'm local and I want to have a nice place to train. So uh, yes, location and, and, and what is the environment around you, what's the competition determines what is the best proposition for you. Andreas, you, of course, from a technician point of view, you guys travel the world, you know what's going on in Asia, you know what's going on in the US, you know what's going on in other countries. How do you, as technogym and you, in your mm. position and your team, help the, your customers to get better in terms of how they do their job, how they do their marketing, how they do their interior design? I mean, what, what, what is your role in terms of helping your customers well, to be better mm. business people? We see, of course, as, as the first partner of, uh, of uh, the operators in the market. You know? So we follow, as you said, exactly the trends which is coming, which is, which is perhaps not so up to date anymore. And for sure, the boutique uh, studio trend is a trend which is there, which we also put some concept over there, our formats which can be easily adapted and also to small boutique studios. Um, for sure, in the next years, as you said before, no, the digitalization will become very, very important, much more than today. Of course, the club itself will always stay in the main reference point. But the big question for the club owners, how can I make money out of the digitalization? When you load yeah. up, when you load up the, all your classes in YouTube, they're available for everybody, so you can never take money back. So our objective is, together with the operators, give them tools, as we do today with the Y Wellness app, for example, to stream live classes only to their members so that they can also recharge them. At the a future. cost. At a, yeah. at a cost, so yeah. that they can only capitalize this. Because we always speak about digitalization, but when digitalization is only a cost for the club, it does not pay off. We as technology understand ourselves with our platform, with our ecosystem, to help them to gain money out of it. Otherwise, it will never work. And this is the, the big uh, transformation I see, not in the next 10 years. It's coming quite earlier. Oh, absolutely. Uh. But in, on, in, in that, in mm. that sense, uh, Carsten, um, one of the problems, of course, during the lockdown was that clubs 
other than in Germany where you have year contracts and so on. But in the UK, for, that's why the UK is suffering so much. You know, the two big chains in, in the UK had for the first half year a drop of more than 50% in, in their revenues because they couldn't bill anymore. You know, the clubs were closed, stopped the billing. If we have a membership model or a, or a pricing model where there is a digital mm. component which continues when the clubs are closed, is that something where you see maybe the market evolving that I know that I'm paying, let's say, 50 euros a month for my membership and so much of that is for the digital service which continues when the clubs are closed? Because there may be a second time that the clubs are going to be closed. So how, how do you see that uh, pricing model changing, if at all? So, yes. So it could be a solution, but, and there's a big but, and Andrea said um, it's very hard to commercialize those digital office offerings. And my advice would be for the sector to look at other sectors who have successfully done that. So think about software as a service, for example, or think about all these pay TV, etc., which have been out and have been regarded by everybody <coughs> as a plus, give it to me and I consume it, but I won't be paying for it. So, but they have kind of, or they were a company successfully driving that. So I think there could be some learnings from those sectors, how you as a sector in, in, in fitness can commercialize that. But I think still the perception of the members, and I know quite well the members in Germany, is that that is an additional service I won't pay for. So I would have the club, I'm ready to pay for the club because I know there's the equipment, there's the service, there's the land as the building everything but well if I look at YouTube or whatever channel then uh, I'm not happy to pay because I get so many offerings which are there out free and that's again what I think Martin said um, you need to differentiate so if you really have a different offering to these offerings which are already there at YouTube etc then I would be happy to pay for all these let's say I have a lot of memberships and, and do digital fitness, but I need to see uh, a counter service for that and not just uh, another YouTube video there. So there must be some interaction with the members. So everybody wants to improve. Everybody wants to get a better health, want to improve with weights or with duration of the run or with the speed of the run, etc. So if you can help your member in doing that, um, I would be happy to pay for it. Yeah. So, but if there's just another Me Too video, no, I'm just going well, elsewhere. Well, uh, maybe the arrival of Apple Fitness Plus and Amazon, who are charging, I think Apple is charging $8 uh, a, a month for, for the streaming of their, of their exercises, that the customer gets used to that, you know. I pay for this for the club and going to the club and the physical space to use that, all that equipment, and I pay X on top of that or as part of the total package for the streaming of exercises. That may be a very interesting way of evolving the membership pricing system for our industry because right now I know a lot of operators are offering the streamed services without charging for it. So uh, the industry yeah. is offering a service without getting paid for it. Uh, Martin, do, do you, you're looking at me like, what is he talking about? You know, what is he dreaming? Well, I think there, um, there are a lot of people in the industry who already try to monetize it. Um, and I failed? Think, and failed. Think? Um, and they've spent big bucks, uh, yeah. including Fitness First, uh, as we were when, once we were a global group. And wh why did um, they fail? Um, <laughs> if you would have known, I don't think there is an answer. I've just not seen anybody being able to monetize it. But that doesn't mean it so can't happen. No, I'm saying no, exactly. Yeah. What, we will, what we have decided is we will use partners who are really good in these areas. Experts. In Experts. This. You know, like um, um, that, that, that they will have the learnings international. They will see maybe one brand who will get this right. And, and we will focus on our product inside the gyms. And I think that's something what a lot of people forget, that it was a unique situation, this crisis and the lockdown, which presents itself in my 20 years, <laughs> luckily only once, but if you use that opportunity, investment in the clubs, yeah. um, tidy up every problem you always had, clean everything yeah. you needed, um, put the equipment in, you think you can do this, change the flooring, yeah. knock offices away. I mean, we have spent in 12 weeks 3.7 million more than we would have spent anyway. And, uh, and it's incredible, the clubs, I've done a club tour over summer, mm -hmm. since we reopened, have been in all the 80 clubs. And they're all like new openings. 
I've never had that in my entire career. Yeah. You walk in and you say, wow, there's not a wall which is not painted correctly or no, not no, nice. I, so I, I think it is staggering. You're, you're, you're hitting on a good point. And I, I see uh, Andrea smiling because you're probably benefiting from these kind of thinking on the operator side. Let's invest in the clubs and get some new equipment in and, and, and upgrade uh, our role offering. Is that? Yeah, de definitely. I mean, uh, the clubs will always be the, the place to be when you want to train. So therefore, yeah. The, the clubs have to continue to invest. Yeah, yeah, it's clear the situation is not stable, so some of them might be a little bit uh, waiting, yeah. but uh, they will invest. So we we uh, um, will will take advantage out of this. This is clear. But nevertheless, I think uh, that this uh, digital uh, you mentioned that it failed, but I guess the time now changed, and the d digital component will become more important and and, and, uh, and the challenge is to monetize it and this is this, is, is, the, the this is the big thing yeah. and I, I think you can only do it as a club owner when I may, may say like this when you do it on your own when you do a, a course like you find on uh, on uh, YouTube nobody will pay for yeah. it. But, but when it's your own trainer yeah. speaking to your own customers live yeah. and stream this could be monetized yeah but this I think one, one, one good example which you can use for for the sector is it's all about um, let's say building communities and if you just have a, a, a one-way YouTube channel where you can work out it's That's not about not. community building and why do people walk into a club because they have their community they can socialize they can train out so you will see examples uh, just take Swift which is a good example for a cyclist yeah they just raise a lot of money and bring up the platform to the even the next level so there are people working out 5,000 people on Vatopia cycling together and there are communities now building from that they are getting I wouldn't say friendships but comrades as you said and you are let's say then uh, meeting with people online virtually yeah. to cycle together so if that could be brought over to the fitness industry as well, that could be a very interesting approach to meet with your peers in the virtual Pilates class of whoever your trainer is at that point of time, but you're meeting there and, and you have some community learning. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Gentlemen, um, time is flying and we have three more minutes left and I've not even touched the questions I had prepared and that we had prepared, so this is great. You know, I think it was a free-flowing conversation here. I have. You have one minute each to answer the following question because there's a lot of new entrepreneurs uh, uh, watching uh, today. What, uh, starting uh, with Andreas, what is your advice to a young person who's starting in the fitness industry today? What, what, is your f what are the few things you want to advise that person well, to do in particular? Being myself only two years in this industry, it's a fabulous industry, I must say. It's full of energy for the young people who join or at the industry level or at the operator level. Lots of opportunities. Even when you want to be self-entrepreneur with a small boutique concept, with a not so high budget, it's feasible. I guess on a long term, when you enter in this industry, you can only be winning. And for sure, it's much more, much more fun working in a fitness industry than perhaps in an insurance company, with all respect for insurance companies. So I guess it's really a good appeal for all young people in a growing market to put their effort, to put their energy in this market to make it even more, more brilliant. Martin, with 20 years experience, you must have a lot of advice for young people coming into our industry. G Look, I've had 21 positions in, my, in, the, in okay, the time that's, I've that's been good. With, uh, in this industry. And uh, so I feel like an entrepreneur, a young entrepreneur every time. Yeah. And at the moment, there's so much new things we do. I think, you know, um, pick something which you're passionate about. Um, don't do anything which you don't like, you know, put this away to someone else. There's great companies out there, you know, at FIBO in, this, in, in the next three days, there's so many great companies which can help you in all the things you don't like or yeah. you don't think you're good at. So, so do something, make mistakes. You know, mistakes are the most important things you can do in life. That's the moments where you... If you learn you know, from them. You, well, you will learn from them because you fall down and you wake up and, and celebrate those, yeah. you know. Um, but, and then... You, Choose your friends and people you connect with carefully because they will determine if you're going to be successful, if you're not successful. If you're very young in your career, maybe start with an operator like us. There are other good operators out there or in the equipment yeah. or in any of the ecosystem because you really have a chance to kind of um, learn from them. But do something passionate, make mistakes, celebrate those, and, and then I see you in five years' time. Totally agree. 
Carsten, your advice to young people coming into journalism? I just quote uh, René Moos, uh, which I had uh, the opportunity to interview yesterday, and the same question I asked to him, and he said, stay to all the other good things you said, Andreas and Martin, stay focused and always put yourself into the shoe of the people you are serving, because we are here in the service industry. So you have to really fulfill what the members are eager for, and that's then a good, uh, I think, argument to, to enter there, because as you said, it's a growing industry still, and I think there is a lot of uh, to look out for. Yeah, and we're a force for good, you know. I'd rather be selling physical activity to people than uh, cigarettes or mm. alcohol or something else. That, uh, Andreas, Martin, Carsten, thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is exactly 10 o'clock. Uh, we could have gone on for another couple of hours, I'm sure, with these three experienced people, but this is it. Uh, wish you a great FIBO uh, online, uh, and I really hope that we all of us will be able to meet in person next year uh, in April uh, in Cologne for a live FIBO again. So uh, with that, I wish you a great day great couple of days and hopefully you learned something today from these experienced people around me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.